my cyber peeps welcome to the very first girly grunge inspiration projects we're going to go into hyperspeed and i'm going to show you the project start to finish i started with the mixed media stacks watercolor paper i inked up my chicken wire stamp with jasmine mixed media inks then sprinkled jasmine mixed media inks embossing powder over that and now i'm heat setting that we're going to do a lot of layers of embossing Now I'm using the Bubble Wrap Stamp with Honey Mixed Media Inks and Mixed Media Inks Embossing Powders. And we'll heat set that again. I like having multiple layers of embossing. It really gives a lot of depth and texture to your projects. Now we're using the Swirl Stamp and Chiffon and Denim Mixed Media Inks. Just kind of randomly placed around the outside. And I'm sprinkling with clear embossing powder this time. It gives it a different look. And we're just heat setting that now. Now the Ledger stamp with Honey Mixed Media inks. And I brought back out the Chicken Wire stamp with Chiffon Mixed Media inks. And clear embossing powder. And heat setting that now. That's the nice thing, you can stamp a few different colors if you're using clear embossing powder. And now I'm using my brick stamp with Twinkle Emboss, but um, it was almost dry, so added some reinker to that. And clear embossing powder again. And that brush is just to wipe away excess powder. Heat setting now. I love how the colors start to blend a little bit. Now I've got my color catcher. I sprayed with plain water and then used a blender with my Indigo Mixed Media inks and did a light color wash across the back. Now I've got Seabreeze Smooch Spritz and Woodstain Smooch Spritz. And you can move your paper around, let it drip into different areas. I'm dabbing off with a baby wipe on the embossed areas, just lightly. And now we're going to dry with a heat gun. Now we're using the Dear Sir stamp with Indigo Mixed Media Inks. And now the Crackle stamp with Wisteria Mixed Media Inks. Again, this one was dry, so just added some reinker. And I'm not even using a block on it this time because I wanted to use just small sections. And again, with the clear embossing powder and heat setting again. And now you can really start to see how the layers are adding to the texture of the background. Now I'm using some wire mesh that I got at a garage sale and I just put some paint on it and I'm just rubbing across the top so that the paint gets that thick texture. You can do the same thing with modeling paste but I have a lot of white paint so I use that. Now I'm cleaning my stamps and we're going to dry the paint. And here comes some fun stuff. So we're gonna spray with water, add Seabree Smooch Spritz, Woodstain Smooch Spritz, Caramel Latte, and we're gonna do color wash with some mixed media inks. First with indigo around the edges, then with truffle in random spots, and then wisteria. Put it back in the color catcher, add some sea breeze smooch brits and mixed berries, and then did some drips of the wood stain. And you can add a little bit of water to help the drips to show up a little bit better. A little bit more sea breeze there. And I'm using a paper towel to lightly dab off the embossed areas and heat it a little bit, and then go back with a baby wipe and dab off the embossed areas a little bit more and you can see lots of different depth and texture in the background now. 
and we're just drying it. You want to really dry it well. If you flip it back and forth, it helps your paper to stay flat. Now the distress it all. You can wiggle the distress it all back and forth and bounce it to get a dip deeper distress. If you go in the direction of the word zutter, you get a lighter distress than if you go in the opposite direction. It makes distressing really easy and fast. And now we're going to distress the other two layers. One is just a craft card stock and the other is the top layer from some zutter corrugated board. And my layout is 8 by 10. The largest uh, piece that I'm using for the background is 8 by 10. And I just cleaned out the trap for the Distress It All. Now I'm using Crafty Power Tape. This stuff is really strong. I love it. Then add some white acrylic paint to the edges. Just using my hand. You can use a paintbrush or a blender if you'd like. Decided to add a little bit more white paint to that top layer. More crafty power tape. And that was it for the background. So now on to the actual embellishments. I'm using the snapshot Polaroid and to get the hole in the center you use classic squares. And now I'm using the wonderful wings the front pieces are from the Chronicle and the back is from Pattern Paper, inking it with Truffle Mixed Media inks. And we're going to add Fairy Dust Glitter with Glue Gloss. It's also, all of this is all from Colorbox. When you add the glitter back in, make sure you take the cap off over a piece of paper because the glitter gets stuck up in the um, thread in the top of the bottle. So I've got a muslin bow and some twine with a washer, using some finesse swirls from Want to Scrap. I love the 3L 3D uh, foam squares scrapbook adhesive foam squares and fabric tuck. These are all my favorite adhesives. They work really well for the for the mixed media that I use. And these are the compatible chipboard alphas from GCD. I'm going to add a little bit of depth with foam squares on the brackets. And the alphas are self-adhesive, so I'm just taking the backing off and sticking them down. more foam squares on the bracket and these are the girly grunge labels and I letter pressed the words using um, the craft label paper and watercolor paper from the stacks mixed media stacks and more finesse swirls So I leave them on the backing and hold it over the area and then trim to the size that I want. Then I take them off the backing. Now I'm doing some bitty blossoms. And I make a lot. I have a couple really large bowls full of pre-made bitty blossoms so that my projects can go faster. Just deciding where I want to put it. And I adhered these with foam squares. And I'm using the little tiny leaves from the Rose Creations set. And they're cut from the Crafty Chronicle. Just inking those up and then adhering them down. Adding a little bit of glue here and there. And there's that brush again, sweeping away the glitter. And I'm using a fine tip Sharpie for the journaling, going around the edges. And my trusty vintage Dymo labeler for the date. And I like to add extra crafty power tape on the back of those to make sure it stays down. 
and here's the finished layout. And here's the supplies that I used. Thanks for watching.